Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jay Burness. It's been a few months since the last video. I've been goofing off a bit on the weekends in favor of enjoying my weekends riding. But the bike's put away now for the season and it's time to get back to work on this video series. So in this video, I'd like to talk about something we see in most patients with post-concussion syndrome, and that's light or sound sensitivity. We'll talk about why this can happen, the type of treatment we use, as well as a few tips to help deal with these issues yourself while you're recovering. When I first meet a new patient, it's pretty common that they look something like this. They wear sunglasses and baseball hats to shield themselves. Some even have earplugs. Most of them have figured out on their own that their symptoms are aggravated by computer, phone, television screens, and bright lights, especially fluorescent lights. There are a few reasons why this can happen with brain injury, but most commonly it comes down to the state of the person's autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system controls the activity of all the automatic processes of our body, things that we don't consciously control. That's things like digestion, heart rate, blood pressure, sleep, temperature regulation, and even the flow of blood in the body. So there are two halves to this system, the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. The parasympathetic system is the rest and recovery and refueling system. It drives things like digestion, relaxation, sleep, and decreases the heart rate and blood pressure. It constricts our pupils and generally dulls our senses. So the sympathetic system is the fight or flight system of our body. It puts us into a state to better deal with danger. It increases our heart rate and our blood pressure, and it sends more blood to the muscles of the arms and legs for increased strength. At the same time, it constricts the superficial blood vessels of the arms and legs to slow down bleeding in case you get injured in a battle. It also causes our adrenal glands to secrete chemicals that raise our state of arousal so we can react quickly. It generally makes our senses sharper, opening up our pupils wide and raising our eyelids to take in more of our surroundings. It even relaxes the tiny muscles on the bones in our middle ear to make our hearing more acute so you can better sense danger. So you may have noticed that the activity of this system has a lot to do with many of the symptoms you might be having if you've had a concussion. Increased heart rate and blood pressure is a common issue with head injury. Constriction of the blood vessels to the hands and the feet, well that makes them feel cold and often sweaty at the same time. Sympathetic activity actually makes us sweaty, so we're slippery and we're difficult to hang on to in a fight. The adrenal glands, they secrete that adrenaline, which raises our state of arousal, but at the same time, it makes it difficult for us to sleep. And our pupils and our eyelids widen, making us too sensitive to light, and our hearing becomes so acute that sound can actually bother us. The sympathetic system lives in the midbrain and the spinal cord, while the parasympathetic system, that lives in the pons and the medulla. In addition to being inhibited by the parasympathetics, the sympathetics can also be inhibited by the higher cortical areas of the brain above it. Most of us can consciously choose to remain or at least act calm in a stressful situation. If we're fully developed, we don't punch everyone we disagree with and we don't run away from everything that scares us. Normally, the higher cortex can inhibit some of these reflexes in favor of a more civilized approach. When we have a brain injury, we can lose some of that inhibition of the cortex and or the parasympathetic system. So the sympathetic system becomes dominant. Our pupils widen and refuse to hold constriction in the presence of light, so we become light sensitive. And our hearing becomes more acute, making us sound sensitive too. In order to fix this situation, we have to make the injured areas of the brain stronger so that they can do a better job of inhibiting the sympathetic system. We do this by gently driving neuroplasticity in these areas with specific brain exercises and stimulations. While you're working on your recovery, uh, beyond avoiding light with baseball hats and generic sunglasses, there are a couple of things you can do to help make dealing with the light more comfortable and therapeutic. And the first is filters. It turns out that green light is the least likely color to trigger a headache in light sensitive patients. I use green glasses like these with some of my patients. While you're wearing them, your pupils will be able to hold constriction longer with only the green light getting through. 
Now you can spend a couple of hundred dollars on blue blocking lenses, or you can buy these online for about 15 bucks. If you're worried about what your friends are going to think of your new look, uh, you don't have to use these green glasses. You can actually just add a green filter like this to your computer screen or your, even your phone screen. This is a uh, photographic lighting gel and it's available from Henry's camera online. It costs about 10 bucks. The intensity of the light on the screens you're looking at should be adjusted as well, but not in the direction you might think. LED computer screens actually control their brightness by switching the LEDs on and off faster than you can consciously see. The more time in the off part of the cycle, the dimmer the screen will be. And dimmable lighting, LED lighting works the same way. But for lots of people, that invisible on-off flicker, that can trigger a headache too. And to eliminate the flicker on your computer screen, you have to adjust the display to full brightness and then cover the screen or your eyes with a green filter or glasses to decrease the intensity. Fluorescent lights have a similar flicker in addition to being too bright or blue in their color spectrum for some patients. You can filter out the color with some green glasses or you can even buy fluorescent lighting filters which I have here in my office, but you really can't do anything about the flicker. So the best plan in those cases is just to avoid the lighting altogether. So that's it for this one. Uh, I hope this information has been helpful. I'll post uh, the info for the green glasses and the green photographic film, some links for that stuff in the information with this video. Uh, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.